Before we talk about the classification of matter, it may be important to remind ourselves what are the three main states of matter. This is something that all of you may be familiar with. The three different states of matter uh, is gas, liquid, and solid. Uh, something that we will emphasize throughout the course is for every word that you heard in, <laughs> in common conversations, you you may want to have not every word but every uh, anything any anything that refers to matter you may want to have a micro sub microscopic look so when from now on every time we talk about gas um, you must have a sub microscopic an atomic vision of what gas looks like um, and it's important that you know that uh, so in gas molecules or atoms are not are not interacting very strongly with each other they therefore they move randomly um, across the container that means that they have pressure against the walls and typically they will have a lower density and they will have a high compressibility Com oops so that means they can be compressed Compressibility. Ability. Um, and they occupy all of the all of the space. As you lower the temperature, and that's important, as you lower the temperature, the the speed of the molecules is lower, therefore uh, the intermolecular interactions start being more important. So molecules or or atoms start not noticing each other therefore they kind of stick together okay and that's the next phase which not all substances at a given pressure may go through but that's the liquid phase we will talk about phase diagrams and um, that will make sense what I just said probably because not all substances at a given pressure go through liquid. Some of them go from gas to solid as you lower the temperature because then the solid, in this case, molecules or atoms do not move around anymore. They are, while well, they interact very strongly with, with the neighboring atoms or molecules, they do not switch places like the liquid does. Okay. This is the classification of matter. However, uh, it may not be enough. And notice that when we talk about common uh, substances, no, it's not a substance, um, common objects such as ice cream or your liver or petroleum, uh, some of these um, objects do not classify as gas, liquid or solid. So this means that the state of matter, while it still holds true that it can be either gas, liquid or solid, uh, this may not be um, good enough for us to understand what is going on at the intermolecular or at the um, atomic level. So this is why we need to move to what we call the classification of matter. The classific and for the classification of matter, the first question that we need to ask ourselves is if the specific matter has variable composition. In other words, is it a substance? That's what it means. Is it a substance? Is it a, a substance is um, matter that has throughout its it's matter uh, the uh, a common composition so in other words if I apply some physical methods if I try to boil it if I try to freeze it if I try to filter it can I separate something and that's then the the difference between a pure substance and a mixture if I can separate this matter by physical methods meaning by filtering by boiling um, by freezing by cent uh, applying a centrifuge, then if you cannot separate it, then we're talking about the pure substance. However, if you can separate it, we call that a mixture. Now, in the pure sub substance, can you separate the pure substance into simpler substances? For example, through a reaction, through a chemical reaction, again, the chemical change that we were talking about before. If you cannot separate your substance, your pure substance, into any farther simpler substances, what you have is a in an, is an element, and there are as many elements as there are in the periodic table, and that's it. Uh, if you can farther separate, then you have a compound. So, for example, carbon dioxide, 
you could think of a reaction in which carbon dioxide, good luck with doing that, but you can think of a reaction where it goes to carbon and oxygen. And so that means that this is a compound that through a chemical reaction you got the elements carbon and oxygen. Now let's move to mixture. You, you have to ask yourself, what kind of mixture do I have? Well, can I observe with my naked eye or with a microscope, still it's uh, available to the naked eye, can I observe the, the crumbs? Does it have different parts? Because if it does, if you observe different parts, this is called, called an, a heterogeneous mixture. That means that you can see different parts in the mixture, therefore um, it's called particulate because the different components of your mixture can be observed. They are not intimately dissolved at the atomic level. However, the homogeneous mixture, those mixtures are dissolved at the atomic level and they cannot be observed with a microscope. Again, a microscope uh, cannot give you any cannot give you the the detail of anything smaller than one micrometer, which again is ten to the negative six meters. Atoms and molecules are around ten to the negative ten. We will talk about later that molecules and atoms do not have color because they do not cannot interact with visible light. Okay, so they cannot be observed with visible light. They cannot be observed with the naked eye. Uh, sodium chloride in water, for example, is the intimately dissolved at the atomic level, therefore it's called a homogeneous mixture. Hopefully that, that makes some sense.